Hi, and welcome to History Makers TV. I'm Matt Prater. Today our guest is Wendy Francis from the Australian Christian Lobby. She's also the executive producer of Carols in the City, a national Christmas TV broadcast each year. Welcome to the program, Wendy. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Matt. Thanks for having me. Now, you really started getting involved in the political arena several years ago when you got really rolled up about some of the billboards you saw around the place. Tell us why you got involved. I did. I did. Well, um, I actually had grandchildren in the back seat. So I have three, my husband and I have three married children. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been married 34 years. Mm -hmm. So had some of the grandchildren in the back, very young, and they were trying to sound out the words on a billboard that was really inappropriate. And I was praying that the lights would change, to tell you the truth, um, because I was wondering how I was going to answer this grandchild. Because as a grandparent, it's different than a parent. Mm -hmm. I believe that as a parent, whatever your child asks you, you answer honestly, obviously age appropriate. But I was trying to decide in my head, how does a grandparent answer these questions? Because really, they're up to a parent. And the light changed. Mm -hmm. So God bless me with that. <laughs> and I drove off. But as I drove off, I just had this burning anger in my heart that the, the grandchildren would have been looking at that and asking about it, rightly so. And as I drove, you know, how, I mean, a woman would understand if you're pregnant, you see everybody else who's pregnant. If you're upset about something, you see it everywhere. And as I drove, I just kept on being confronted just over and over again with inappropriate images. And I thought something's got to be done about this. Our children are actually being affected. Mm. And I looked and I, I found Collective Shout, I found a few different places that you could go to. But every time I tried to actually do anything about it, every avenue led to Parliament House. And the advertising issue is a federal issue. Mm -hmm. And so it led me there and I just kept on going until I got to the doors that I could actually make a, a complaint to, that, that I got heard. Mm. And since then we've had a number of different inquiries and reviews, but it's still no, nowhere near what we should be. And our children are being um, learning about sexual things way before their time mm. and being confronted with images. And we, have, we all seem to think that there's a problem with pornography and our, particularly our young boys are affected with that. And yet from a very young age, we're almost grooming them to have an appetite for that sort of thing. And it grieves my heart because I believe it grieves the heart of God. And have you seen any billboards taken down because of your campaigning? We have. We have. And, it, you know, it's not just me. There's a number of others, but I've really spearheaded the G-rated outdoor advertising campaign. And we we did stickers and all sorts mm -hmm. of things. So it's been uh, quite successful. And we have had a number of billboards come down. Never on time, though, Matt. See, what annoys me is that they go up and they'll be up for at least three weeks before they're ruled on and they come down. And often they achieve what they want to by even increased media because there's people complaining. Mm. So you've got to pick your battles, but it's, it's just they shouldn't be up there. Mm. So if people want to make a complaint about a billboard they see these yep. days, how do they do that? The only way to complain at the moment is to go through the Advertising Standards Board. And if you Google that, you'll find it easily. Mm -hmm. and, it, and the complaint process is quite clear. It's not quick. You have to fill in a form. You don't have to give your name. Mm -hmm. And I, I encourage everybody all the time, just keep on making your voice heard because the only standard that applies in advertising is what they call the prevailing community standard. And the only way they're going to know what the prevailing community standard is, is to hear from the community. Mm. Now, obviously, uh, one of the issues that you're passionate about with the Australian Christian Lobby is the sexualisation of our culture, that yeah. there's so many uh, sexualised images on, you know, not just on billboards, but on no. TV, on the internet, everywhere. Yeah. Um, the Australian Christian Lobby is really uh, outspoken about this topic. What, what are some of the other topics that you guys like to tackle at the, at the Christian Lobby? Yeah, I have to say that most of the topics that the Australian Christian Lobby tackle are on the basis of the effect that they have on our children, mm. the next generation. And we're always looking towards that because we believe that God is looking towards our children and he has such a love and he, I mean, he encourages us all to come to him as a child. So we're, we're looking at marriage. Uh, certainly we believe that in, a, in ma a healthy marriage, when children are brought up in a healthy marriage, that is by far and away the best place for them to be. It's not the only reason why we want to protect marriage. Mm. There's a strong theological reason for um, us to protect marriage as well. But there's marriage, but there's um, the education system. We're always sort of keeping an eye on that. 
And it's not that we're looking for something to complain about, we're actually looking to add to our society. So, uh, you know, the, God says to his people in the Bible that you're to seek the peace and prosperity of the place where you are. Mm. And so we're, we're looking to seek the peace and prosperity by, you know, just making sure we just keep an eye on things like education, but also uh, very few children are adopted in Australia these days. And adoption, there's been issues and, and there's been problems with forced adoptions and we would never condone that. Mm. But the concept of adoption is beautiful. Mm. And so we're, we're looking to sort of promote that as well. Um, but we're, we're worried about life issues. So when I say life issues, we're worried about both ends of life, birth and death. And it's not just, some people think, oh, well, you're just trying to um, stop abortion. It's not just that. It's that we're trying to reach out to those girls who feel that there's no other way but to have an abortion. Every, every girl, I believe, in that situation, to some extent, is a victim. It's not just the baby, it's actually that young girl because she is feeling like there is an unwanted pregnancy and somehow I have to get out of this. And so we're reaching out to those young girls and seeking to walk alongside them and show them that there are other options. Mm. And, and, so, and then with the euthanasia side of things, the other end of life, uh, we're working closely with the Queensland Government uh, where I live, particularly on the palliative care system and looking to increase uh, the palliative care offerings that we have in place for people who are looking at the end of their life. Mm. There's so much we can do. But you know, as a woman, I'll tell you, there is pain at birth. <laughs> <laughs> pain is associated with birth. And I don't think we can remove all pain associated with death. Death is actually ugly. Mm. But we can make it a, a very spiritual and a very beautiful experience for people when they know the Lord and they're at the end of their life. Um, but I would seek to value every life in, in what I do. It's good to hear you say about the things that you're for, because a lot of people think, oh, you know, the Christian lobby, they're just against this, they're against that. But you're actually for life. You're actually for our children's future. And that's one of yeah. the things I, I just think so good that you're so outspoken about that. And I, I heard it said recently that a smart chess player thinks seven moves ahead before he makes his next yeah, move. Wow. And that's what we've got to think about with the future, don't we? We've got to think, yeah. you know, all these changes that could happen in the in the laws of Australia today, how could it affect our kids in the future? Like I've got three kids, I, I care about what kind of world they're going to be living in as they grow up. Uh, so let, let's just backtrack to the marriage issue. Yeah, okay. As you know, it's been a pretty big one. It has. You've actually gotten a bit of hot water over <laughs> it lately. Yes, there's been a bit of talk in the media about that uh, in uh, in previous months. And Maybe I should interview you at this stage, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, I mean, we do have to consider, if mm. they change the definition of marriage, yeah. how could it affect things in the future, like in education and, you know, what, what they teach in sex education? Could, could it affect things in our schools in the future? It will immediately affect things in our schools because at the moment there is a, a situation where there's a mother and a father and uh, the children understand that and they understand um, what a marriage is. There's also de facto relationships and there's also many single parents and none of those are discriminated against in our Australian culture or, or even our political system. But at the moment in school, we, have, uh, we don't have an equal um, relationship. So we have people wanting to bring in um, a man-man, a woman-woman as being an equal relationship with a husband and a wife. As soon as we do that, then all our books, all our um, teaching um, has to change because we have to have an equal amount of other families represented. So our children would then need to be taught what a homosexual is, uh, what a homosexual lifestyle is, all of these things start coming into play because what we'd be saying is that there is an equal relationship. Now, I believe that every single person is equal and God certainly treats every single person as equal. But not every relationship is equal. Uh, you and I are good friends, um, but I've got closer friends mm. and I've got um, girlfriends that I'm really close with. So my relationship with you wouldn't be necessarily equal to somebody, but it doesn't make it any less important and mm. it doesn't make it any less special. So there is a relationship between a husband and wife that is special. And at the moment in Australia, we recognise that as marriage. We have always recognised it as marriage. As soon as we change that to include other things, then it dilutes it. It dilutes it. 
And so our children will grow up thinking, well, there's this sort of marriage and this sort of marriage, and I can choose whichever one I really want to. It's very confusing, whereas at the moment, there is marriage and there's between man and woman. Mm -hmm. And then um, there are other relationships that other people choose to have, but it's not called marriage. Mm. Thanks for watching History Makers TV. Tune in next week for the conclusion of this amazing and life-changing interview. And remember, anyone has a chance to become a history maker. If you're looking for a better loan to purchase, refinance or invest, shop free with multi-choice mortgage brokers. Call 1300 36 36 or go to multichoice.com.au.